Good afternoon, all you business geeks out there in business geek geekdom. Geek, geekdom? I think it's geekdom. Uh, <laughs> you are watching or listening right now to the Business Geeks Podcast, an entrepreneurial show where three friends geek out loud and proud on everybody's business. I'm Super Joe Pardo of superjoepardo.com and indiepodcasters.com. I'm joined by my two wonderful co-hosts, Jennifer Crawford, the co-founder of Sparent.co, and Samantha Riley of SamanthaRiley.global. This week, we are talking about when, if, should, what do I do, when, uh, time to raise those prices. And uh, I, I know that we all have diff both different experiences and different uh, probably a little bit of different feelings on on that on those questions and how we approach them in our businesses and depending on what kind of business we have too because uh, I I will t divulge into some inventory <laughs> based uh, raising of prices and when things went up um, you know from the past so anyway how how are you both feeling today you both uh, you both awake now now that we got to dance <laughs> it out and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I guess I, I found out how old I I am today. Oh, congratulations. I, oh, hang, hang on. Tell me. Tell us more, Jen. <laughs> I am adjustable bed old. I adjustable ordered myself bed. a new mattress and the I had an option of getting the adjustable frame so you can put the, the head, you know, the, the feet or the head area up. And it also comes with, you know, built-in massaging mechanisms. Jen, mm. Jen, I don't know about this. <laughs> I am adjustable bed years wow. old. Wow, <laughs> you are. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the uh, the air mattress thing. Uh, what, no, what's their, no. I don't know what they're called. And, um, I had one, and, and I, I did not like it. You can make fun. I've spent years making fun of the Sealy Posturepedic. Is that the one that, you know, that's kind of famous for, you know, it shows in the commercial, yeah, the elderly yeah. couples like going. Up. But I, I need this. I need this because I always read like before I go to bed, and I've I've got like this you know concoction of pillows that I can never get just right. My mattress, I realized, not my mattress, mine and Thor's mattress, our mattress we realized it's 20 years old and you're not supposed to have a mattress for 20 no, years. That that's terrible. Yeah. It's, you know, it was a nice mattress when we bought it, but it's, you know, we flipped it and turned it as much as we can. We, we've definitely gotten our, our use out of it. So I'm excited about the new bed, but I know that this is not something a 20 year old would purchase, but I'm excited anyway. I'm so, so glad I, you've got a new bed. <laughs> thank you. It's on its so way. I, I got I to tell you, there, at one point we had a bed uh, where it was half soft and half hard. And that was the dumbest thing because when you go to rotate the bed, you literally have to move all of your stuff to the other side of the bed the broom ah, right so it's, it's, it yeah. was like trying to counteract the and that what's what's the i forget what the name of the air mattress people's uh the company thing i'm trying to search i can't think of the name of the company oh okay uh the inflatable bed mattress thing i don't know somebody, well, some, for, like, somebody guests, somewhere is right? like screaming like, at me i thought that's what you did when you went camping? No, yeah, that's a no, camping, no, no. Like a high, high quality one. Um, oh, not a camping quality. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've no, never no, heard no. of such a thing. Not. No. Um, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, where's Brent when you need him? I'm sure he would. Yeah, <laughs> Brent, uh, <laughs> Brent, help Joe. <laughs> well, uh, I did. I did discover something that I think might be helpful if you are searching for a mattress. Which I found. I, this is something I've put off because when you go to shop for a mattress, um. It's overwhelming because there are so many oh, choices, God. and uh, and I, I decided I was going to get like go with one of these online mattress companies because I you know didn't really want to go to a mattress store, particularly now. Like, what is that like? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, as I was bouncing between like these online mattress companies, I was seeing some that had different names but were very similar in terms mm -hmm. of what they offered, and I was like, I realized they're all the same company. And we, we really realized it when it showed up on our credit card receipt. 
it was, we saw the, the double name. I was like, I, I was right. It is, it is all the same company. They're the mattress companies, these online mattress companies, several of them are competing against themselves. I mean, they're, wow. they're, competing well, they're not, themselves. they're not competing though, Jen. So, so they'll match any price that you will find, right. but the problem is, yeah. is you won't because they all use different part well, numbers. That's what I'm saying. They're comp wow. competing so, so against wow. themselves. Wow. Yeah. Do you know when we're talking about buying mattresses, I can't, every time I always think of that, that scene in the, um, in the intern, like, do you, do you know the movie I'm talking about where, where the two guys go work at Google? Uh, and there's a scene where Will Ferrell is the mattress salesman mm -hmm. and, and he's like, you know, coming on to the hot young girl and he's telling the old woman to go away. That's always what I think of when you talk about mattresses. <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, enough about my mattress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I found it. It was the sleep number bed. And yes, so we bought this queen mattress, which wasn't really big enough to begin, uh, for two people, and it was half and half. So you would, like, if you're on the hard side, you'd roll a little bit and then fall into the soft side. It was not good. Not good mm, at all. Yeah, every that, time you rotated it, you had to move all your stuff to the other, you know, to the other bed. Uh, Crazy. Bike stand. Yeah, it was. It was a really bad decision. Um, anyway, <laughs> well, I hope I hope I have better luck with this this mattress. I'm very excited. It even has I'm USB so uh, ports in the side of it. It's very it's very modern day. Oh wow! Super very modern. There. It's a super fancy mattress. Super, uh, that is actually really convenient. Then you don't have to have as many chargers under your, sitting under your bed. There's a lot of convenience. I, I'm feeling like this is going to help me in so many ways because my my sleep quality has been kind of bad lately. Because it I, could be because of all those uh, devices. I'll just say <laughs> that I probably wouldn't be using the USB ports in the mattress. <laughs> yeah, oh, you think uh, because of the uh, the. The, the stuff coming off the phone and everything. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I don't usually have it in the bedroom with me, actually. I, I, I charge it in my office. So I, I kind of with you there. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> Marsha says, does it spin? I love it. <laughs> does it hand out berry floss? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think it has cup holders. That was kind of was like, why does it have a cup, why does it have cup holders? Um, you know, you're you're uh, buying a, a mattress, not a car. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I want well, my. You know I want it to be comfortable. I want it to be. But if you can, me. if you can set it up into like a seating position, then yeah, I guess a couple yeah. older makes sense. You yeah. can watch the movie and drink the. <laughs> cup. Yeah. Oh, and awesome. get this, it has a zero gravity setting. What? Wow. You're like what? So basically, um, NASA determines the sales pitch. I'm not sure how accurate it is, but NASA determined that for their astronauts, the most comfortable sleeping position is this like zero gravity position. So on the remote control for my new mattress, I can just hit zero gravity and I'll be sleeping like an astronaut. Wow. Ding, ding. Well, well, tell us what it feels like to go to the moon at night. I really yeah. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, don't make man. fun of my mattress, Brent. I see you in the chat over there. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Today, well, <laughs> my first new mattress in 20 years. Give me a little. <laughs> let me have a bells and whistles. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew we could get such a good laugh over a mattress? Yeah, exactly. Jen, I'm you're always delivering. You are always delivering. I'm, just, I'm like the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the mailman post, uh, not the not the post-2020 mailman, but the, uh, yeah. the, the 2019 mailman. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! All right, so so uh, this week talking about pricing <laughs> and when is it time to raise prices? So um, so I'll, I'll kick it off from an inventory standpoint. We used to raise our prices, uh, at, you know, in the in the um, truck parts company. Whenever a new price sheet was coming out, we would raise them immediately, like mm -hmm. as soon as as quick as we got them and got the 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 stuff into the system, we would flick over the prices immediately. Um, because you don't know, like, there's just so many, you know, when you're dealing with so many different parts, like you just don't know what you have, what you don't have. There's no way to easy way to do like a rolling thing. You're not talking about like six part numbers. You're talking about like 60,000 to 600,000 parts. And it just isn't, you know, it's not possible. So you just, uh, the, and then, you know, and it does sometimes get tricky, right? Because people would say, oh, well, I literally just bought this filter last week and now it's, it's, it's a, you know, 80 cents more. What the heck happened? Like, well, 
Well, the, the prices, prices went, went up. up. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I mean, it used to be a thing where it's like it would go up like once a year, right? Leading up to like the beginning of the year, they'd have a new price sheet come out like December, mid December, and you'd have like two weeks to get it in. But then, like as like you know, to, in, back in like two thousand six, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it was like sometimes three, four, five times a year they're like coming out with a new price sheet for these part, you know, for these parts. Well, that's inventory. Okay, so Joe, I want to ask you because you, my guess is, since this was your show topic, my guess is you, this was uh, a topic that was feeling near and dear to your heart because you recently <laughs> raised <laughs> rates. Inventory, schmingentory. Uh. I want to talk about uh, IndiePod University raising its rates because you, I think this was something that your business friends, your business geek friends haven't been encouraging you to do, but... Let's bring it home, Joe. Talk about your recent <laughs> experience. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I, I raised the prices for for IndiePod University. Uh, it started out at ten dollars, a you know, to get in, but it was a limited product where there wasn't like a, a separate community based around it. Uh, there was less value. It was mostly just like, hey, if you want access to all these recordings, there's like 150 hours of recordings uh, for podcaster, you know, podcasting resources and past like workshops and things. Like, boom, it's all right here. It's just ten bucks a month, and we sold like next to zero. Um, if not zero, you, so, it was ten dollars a month, right? Not just ten dollars total. No, ten dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. ten dollars a month because we were constantly adding and pouring in another like six, seven, eight hours of recordings, pretty much every two weeks for a while there. Um, and even now, like the the newest conference that's come that we're hosting coming up in September, which is now going to be a two day event, not a one day event, because. Ding, ding. I don't know. <laughs> we got so so much to do. We can't pack it all in one day. Um, you know, so once uh, once it was like, okay, so I was like, well, what if I take this other program that I was running to like get more of the um, like the one on ones and the groups and stuff like that, like group coaching calls and things of that nature? What if I just took all that and, and br brought it back together? Because originally it was going to be all together like that. Uh, but I still want, I wanted something that was like a lower price point, but apparently that didn't fly. So it was like, okay, well, we're going to raise it to a hundred dollars. Um, and not only did we bring in, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know, 12, 15 people under the $10 a month banner or, uh, price a point, I guess, uh, we did bring in, uh, I think we're at like four or five right now, uh, at the hundred dollar price point. So it's 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 growing like and it's 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 awesome well it's Can I, yeah. oh, oh well oh, i was you, gonna, no, you good, <laughs> well i was gonna bring you in sam because i learned something from samantha riley this week and that is that 97 percent of people who purchase static courses don't actually complete them mm -hmm. and that there's a benefit from instead of creating a course to create a program and samantha did wow, you've been yeah. reading my LinkedIn posts, Jen. Yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah. It was great information. So, so <laughs> Joe, it sounds like to me that one, you you created a program as opposed to just the static, you know, library of resources. Yep. So something that's more interactive and packed with more value. And that is actually a really great tip for when you're raising your rates. One thing you can do not to tick off your customers is give them more for their money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it, and it does kind of get tricky sometimes though. Right. Because, uh, full disclosure, somebody was like, Oh, well, because we're paying, you know, some of us are paying for the group. Uh, should we get free tickets to icon six? And I was like, no, <laughs> like this is a separate event. That's not being held inside that. With that said, I'm doing a workshop on August 20th, which I need to plug, which we have. Oh man, I forgot to run all the, uh, I forgot to tick the, the ticker in the bottom. Um, but on August 20th, we're doing a workshop that we're hosting inside of the, the, the uh, icon university so that anybody who buys a ticket gets a one, like it's a hundred dollar <laughs> workshop. You get a, a one month access to the community and the resources and, uh, on, you know, and you get, you know, in, incorporated in that you get the workshop as well. So, but it, it's trying to like find the right price and all that like you don't want to go too low and be like oh you're gonna get like one month i mean i guess at that point it's like a one month discount because then they're gonna it's gonna go up to 100 anyway but you know it's just things like that keeping those things in mind when trying to price things going forward mm -hmm. 
that you're not oh, like, written oh, like, so we're doing many a $10, do- like $10 sale. It's like, well, wait, what about all those people that, that have been paying 100 bucks for like six months? Now, all of a sudden, th- these people are getting in for 10 bucks, even if it, you know, it's a two month, one month, three month kind of thing. Like, it can get tricky. It's, you know, you're not, you're not Walmart, right? They could be like, ah, you know, whatever. We'll just write, write a couple little, you know, return checks, no big deal. Or here's a, you know, here's a gift card. Have a great day. You know, I don't think there's a problem it. with the founder's price. I well, think not that a founder's they... price. I'm saying going backwards at like doing a sale after the fact, not a founder's ah, price. Okay. Cause like yeah. right now, like that was the founder's price, which is like $10. And actually yeah, yeah. I did a lifetime access to it prior, like back in September. So we had people that have already like purchased into that. Not many, but a handful of people that have paid, purchased in that, that are going to get lifetime access for all that going forward. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't have to do that, but I felt, compelled to do it Um, i want to ask about that lower price point the people that first joined up at that lower price point were they people that had known you for a long time and they already knew how much value you provide or were they brand new cold leads that you'd never heard of before uh most of those people i did know uh for a long time they just weren't signing up now part of the problem was probably a marketing problem of having two programs that i was trying to like hey, it's always a marketing problem <laughs> and then there's a you know there's the super circle where you get the the community access you get access to the university resources you get access to the you know one-on-one time and group coaching calls and all these things and and so yeah so it was a it, you know so just taking it and, and originally i had that i just could, couldn't offer all that at $10 a month. And I wanted to have something that was cheaper, but as it turned out, that wasn't necessarily what was needed. Mm. Cause mm. I think he, here's the thing with pricing and I'm, sh- and I know you'll agree with this, Jen, that at the, there is actually a tipping point where when you put something at a really low price point, people will think, well, I'm not going to sign up because it's going to be crap. Can I say That's that? That's what I would but, think. But, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I wouldn't have signed up at $10 a month because I'd be thinking, well, there's going to be nothing of value in there whatsoever. So that's why I ask people that know you, they'll be like, wow, I know how much uh, how much value this person gives. This is a bargain. I'll sign up. But the chance of getting someone that you've never seen before or they've never been in your world to sign up at that price point is pretty, pretty low, pretty low. So where's the tipping point, right? When you're thinking like, okay, <laughs> I don't want to do too much, but I don't want to do too little. Um, and I guess it all kind of comes back to like where that marketing is, po- like who's it pointed to, right? Who are you targeting? So, um, but there's always got to be a tipping point, right? And trying to find the right dollar figure, I mean, can be tricky, especially going on early. Like to me, it's easier to go up than it is to like, oh, I'm going to start oh, you don't like go down. Thousand and then yeah. go mm-hmm. down like you know, you don't, you obviously you don't want to do that because you're going to take a lot of people off, uh, <laughs> later, like later on down the road. So, yeah. Well, maybe this is a good time to talk about, um, when you want to raise your prices, right? Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, you can't just do it willy nilly. You will, you will take people off. You can't do it too often. Yeah. Um, but there are certain times in business where I think it is incredibly important to raise your prices. Um, so I thought, let's let's talk about that. And then we can like kind of go into how you can do it um, without being fearful that you're going to lose all of your business. Uh, because I think that's the big, that's the big fear, right? That if I raise mm-hmm. my prices, I'm going <laughs> to lose my customers. I'm going to lose whatever revenue is already coming in. So we operate in this state of fear, even though our costs are going up, one reason to raise your prices, our mm-hmm. profit, maybe we're not profitable. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I've seen business owners who just slap a price on their services or products mm-hmm. um, without doing a lot of research. And then they realize they, they're not charging enough to make a profit. <laughs> and then they pray. And then they pray. <laughs> and they think, oh, if I just get 5,000 more customers, yeah. I'll make it up in volume. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so <laughs> yeah, maybe so very, very true. It's so true. If you have more work than you can handle, you have just, you know, you've entered into that supply demand world, which deter- which is really the two things that determine prices, right? Mm-hmm. So, so if you have more work coming in than you can handle, it's time to raise your prices. 100%. 
simple. That's an easy one. I mean, that's yeah. like, that's super easy. No so did, did either of you watch the video that uh, uh -huh. I sent over? Um, of course. It was talking about like- you We know, always just, do just our homework, your... Joe. Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> Where are you even? The fact that you even asked <laughs> is well, insulting. Sorry. I'm sorry. How no, dare no, you no, think no. I come unprepared? <laughs> this guy comes unprepared. Uh, not I have two people. Right. <laughs> I was self-projecting. I it was terrible. Um, <laughs> How dare you? Uh, no, but but the idea that like you, you know in the in the vi video that we uh, we we talked or I sent in the uh, in the notes was like how to go about raising your prices and and one of the philosophies was like all the time like every t every time you have a new project raise the price. Mm -hmm. New customer. Now, in that video, they were talking specifically to to an artist. You know, so yes. this this uh, the two hosts of that video apparently work with with creatives, which have, you know, people that are creating one of a kind uh, work. Uh, they have a particular. Uh, difficulty with pricing because I've worked with artists before uh, because they're doing something they love, and mm -hmm. so there's a lot of like guilt around you know taking money to, for, for doing something that they love. But but yes, a very interesting discussion. And one thing that uh, Joel Pilger said, uh, a quote from that video that I loved was, position yourself as an expert, not as a service provider. Mm -hmm. mm. And I thought, I thought that was really a brilliant, a brilliant statement. Uh, because you don't have, you have a unique knowledge that you're delivering. I don't care what you're doing in your, whatever you're offering with your business, you have a unique intimate knowledge of something that your customer does not. Exactly. And you also have a limited resource. At some point that resource is limited, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay. So in terms of, let's get back to when to raise your prices. Um, if your cost, I think we talked about this, your cost of doing business is increasing, you, your prices have to, you know, flex with that because it's, you can't just look, you know, shrink your profit margin um, and expect to stay in business for any length of time, because guess what? Your cost of doing business is probably going to continue to go up from year to year. Hmm. Um, if your competitors are charging significantly more than you, I get you, you know, I, I've never liked the be the cheapest, you know, game in town strategy. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's not something that appeals to me. I don't want to race to the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, if you're if you know for a fact that you're the cheapest, I mean, you have, you know, you have room there to to move your prices around. Um, oh, Mary Sue has a question. I uh, love that. If I'm an expert, do I add 20 percent to my price? <laughs> She's like, if she, she considers herself an expert. Yeah, of course. Yeah, do it. Do it, Mary Sue. I, I'll support you with that. Oh, I'm a, I'm a customer of her, so I just cost myself some money, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's a perfect example to, to raise your prices. It's all good. Don't worry about it. It's it's a domino effect. What am I missing, Sam? What other, where are some other So, so well, I think that we're talking about supply and demand, we're service providers here. So, and that's mostly what we're, we're discussing is service providers because it is so much easier when you're talking a product, right? So let's just yeah. sort of wipe that off the table. I actually think that, and this is how I do it, I put my prices up monthly and I just get, that's how I find my tipping point because you, you just keep right, bringing them up a little, a little, a little, a little, and you kind of find where, where you settle. And that supply and demand will change as you get more well known. So with Mary Sue, I'd be, I mean, I put my prices up probably about an hour before you sent that link through for the YouTube video, Joe. So I had a bit of a giggle when I saw it come through because I just put my prices up this week. <laughs> um, and I will do the same next month and I'll do the same the next month after. I, when I put my prices up, I don't put my prices up for all my clients. So this is where it's a little bit different for me. I, Whatever my clients sign up to, that's their price. They may get a pricing uh, a price increase at some point. You know, if the if the dollar uh, drops, probably I will put my prices up because uh, in Australia it's a little bit different for us because we're paying out all our costs in US dollars, but some people are bringing in in Australian dollars. And let me tell you, it's not it's not dollar for dollar. So um, that's something that Australians really need to pay attention to is what our costs are because a lot of people get confused with that. But mm -hmm. you need to be looking at your profit margins. Yeah. What do those profit margins look like? And in service, it's got to be it. You know, I'd be looking at 50% being the minimum, you know. 50 to 70% should be the kind of um, uh, profit margin for a service-based business. And if you can get it above 70%, like, do it. 
do it. Nothing but you need to that. be paying need to be paying attention to your costs. And it's a bit funny. I have a bit of a giggle when people in coaching businesses say, "Oh, I'm a coaching business. I have no costs." Really? Really? You don't have any costs. Let's just talk about this. We've got a CRM. We've got hosting. We've got, you know, probably some sort of contractors along the way. We've got, you know, Zoom. We've got all of the tools and the resources that we use. You know, you add them up, like it's in the thousands per month. Well, Not mine is your anyway. time. Your time. Correct. Your exactly. Time. Yep. I mean, time. It's so valuable. And we discount it all the time or we don't even account for it. Um, such a, such a huge, huge miss there, uh, not to factor in, in your time. Um, you know, I think another sign that you need to, to raise your rates, particularly if you have a, you know, a team employees, if you can't attract or keep top talent in your company, because you can't afford to pay them what your, you know, what the industry standard is, then you need to raise your rates. Mm hmm uh period yeah you've got to be yeah. able to pay your people you got to be able to pay your people well because guess what that you know if you can't keep top talent um your whole business is going to be diminished in quality right so you're not going to be able to deliver quality yeah. services or products yep. if you don't have top talent um so so yeah that, I mean, that's a that's a really really good point because i think that a lot of people just think about themselves but when you're growing, it, it has to go way past yourself, way, way past. Yeah. And you need to be pricing for that before it happens. And here's another way to look at it. You have to sometimes you're well, I think every business gets to the point where you need to price out your pain in the butt clients. <laughs> she needs a ding for that, Joe. <laughs> yes. You yes. got to price them out. And sometimes raising your rates, you're going to lose customers. But guess who you're going to lose first? Mm -hmm. You're going to lose the customers that didn't value you to begin with. And we're probably, you know, causing you 80% of your headaches. You know, so, what? That, was, that was the gold of the show. There we go. <laughs> Jen, <laughs> we brought it home. <laughs> I got a ding. Oh. <laughs> Yay. All right. So how can we go about raising? Okay. So let's do the scary thing. We know, we know we need to raise our prices or our profits are down, our costs are up, our, our customers need to be priced out. We need to bring in top talent, whatever the reason or all of the above. How do we do it? Can we, can we role play this? Yeah. I, I think it would be, I think it would be fun okay. to, to do that. Can I be a queen? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course you can. Sure. Can, the queen. <laughs> I, just, I thought we were going to pick our own parts. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Embarrassing. It's, a, it's, a, it's all right. Well, that's the uh, the improv in you. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. just jumping out at okay. Yes. I'll, I'll yes be, I'm just me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, you can. <laughs> uh, I'm confused so I, what the role play is. So, so because... one of us will be the client and one of us will be the, the provider. Okay. Okay. So, Sam, do you want to be the provider or you want me to be the provider? Well, no, no. This is why I'm confused because isn't it as simple as when someone says, cool, what's the price? You just tell them the new price? Well, no, no. Okay, so this is, well, it can be, but there's what if you get pushback? Not everyone's just like, oh, yeah, new new price, cool. Like, I, I just paid $600 and now all of a sudden I'm paying $750 like, for the same exact thing. Like, what, what happened here? Or in my mind, the same exact thing as the client, right? But it's not the same exact thing, and it's not the same exact. It's not the same exact anything. Now my team's bigger because because of because of clients like you, I had to expand and add more cost. Ah, oh, see, I never ever 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 explain myself. It's just that's the price, and yeah. then I oh, just go quiet. You need to. Oh, 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 I'm not saying you need to. Uh, don't don't get me wrong there. I'm saying that 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 that's the reasoning behind needing to raise raise, raise the price. But well, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to sit back and watch Jen be the queen oh, okay. and be you and watch you be the service provider, Joe, because I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Well, I, I feel like I'm missing something okay. here. Well, I Sam, like I think what, fail I, at this. No, no, I think what, <laughs> Sam, I think what you're missing is I think it's challenging when you're raising the rates with existing customers. So yes. you said uh -huh. you honor your rates with your existing customers. Uh -huh. You only raise with the new customers. But for a lot of businesses, they need to raise rates across the board, even with their uh -huh. existing you know, customers. Um, I've been in a position to do that. Um, we did it in Sparent. The reason I like the subject is because a lot of people think, okay, there's one way to raise my cut my rates. I charge $10 for X and now I'm going to charge 15. But there's so many ways you can raise your rates that aren't 
as blunt, right? And, or maybe a little subtle, easier to digest, but end up with the same dollars, you know, on the table. So, you know, for instance, with Sparent, uh, we didn't raise our hourly rate for our virtual assistants, but we did have, stupidly so, um, we had rollover hours. We allowed our clients to, to if they didn't use uh, the hours they paid for, they would roll over and they could use them later, you know. But oh, what was that happening, sounds painful. Oh, it was. What, so what yeah. happened is um, we had quite a few clients who were like, were banking up these hours. And so we had essentially like an escrow account you know, for the, that money. So if, when they cash them in, it would all, you know, we wouldn't have to worry that it wasn't there, that we spent it on expenses or whatever, but our accountants are like, what the heck are you doing? This is a nightmare. Um, mm -hmm. So, so we, we didn't raise our rates, but we stopped rollover hours. So in essence, we were kind of adjusting our, our rate structure a little bit because we were not allowing sort of that benefit of that, that carryover. Um, so it wasn't a direct, like, raising of your rates, but there are ways you can package things um, in order to to get that value from your customer mm. dollars um, yeah, without right. just being like, okay, we're now charging this and deal with it. Um, yeah. So anyway, what, okay, sorry, sorry. That I, no, I no, just, no. I went well, to, on no, another no, side. I think that I was really, to, really good point. Yeah, that was. Um, and I wanted to back on, on that was, uh, you know, I, that's the way I always start with with trying to figure out my pricing is is starting with like a base package of like, okay, so if this costs this much, this is the, 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 and then it's like, okay, now how can I raise it from there, right? Can I add something? How can I, you know, what else did I not include to figure out? Like you bring all these pieces together and you say, okay, like this is how much I can, I can like, I should bare minimum be charging. And now let me add like 30% to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a minimum right and, like, and 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 then i have a starting price to go to market with and, and be like hey sam what do you think of this idea and it's like okay and it and it's it's 200 dollars a month or something and it's like oh okay that that you know that doesn't sound too unreasonable okay yeah, great. yeah. you know Actually, at least then you have a sudden then you go oh now it's 300 <laughs> super super good point so i let me just share um how I did this. And at the time I thought it was a mistake, but now I don't think it was. I wanted to raise my prices and what I, and I was a bit funny about it at the time, but I was adding like a, like a ridiculous amount of value. So what I did was pulled back some of the, the client facing activities that I was doing and I cut that in half. And then that didn't feel right to me. So what I did was added them back in and then put my prices up. And that's effectively what I did with IndiePod University. Was yeah, I, yeah. I had all that stuff in there and I was like, okay, $10 a month. Like this should be like super easy. Like it's going to go big. And then it did cricket, right? We got the, we got the crickets. So <laughs> it's like, okay, well, what, what, what can I do? I, I'll take the, those pieces out, put them in a different package, sold one or two of those. Okay. And then bring them back together and the right price goes even up higher. Mm, so. mm -hmm. Yeah. I think sometimes yeah. what we forget um, when we have that fear of raising prices is that in a lot of ways, <clears throat> we are communicating a lot to our customers about the value of our products and services, right? Mm -hmm. So that $10 uh, Joe, like you were communicating, as we said earlier, that what you were offering had little value. It's like it's worth 10 bucks a month. Like it's not even worth my time. Hmm. So we have to be careful about what we, you know, communicate um, yeah. in terms of, you know, the perception of our current customers and also potential customers on what we are actually delivering. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was talking to a girlfriend of mine last week and I was like, you know, I'm at that age where I need not only an adjustable mattress, but I'm thinking <laughs> about like getting my like skin, like sandblasted, you know, getting like a, a chemical peel or something. Uh -huh. And she says, you should uh, get on a uh, uh, Groupon because there's a lot of these, you know, you know, medical places, these, you know, uh, that have huge discounts. And I said,
I don't want a discount. If there's one thing I'm going to pay full price for, it's to have me anything to do with my face. Yeah. Like I don't. Yeah. I want. I want to pay full price. I don't want the the doctor working on my face, going, "Well, this one, you know, got fifty percent off." <laughs> I, want so. to, I want to walk out with my face. Yeah, <laughs> I want to actually walk. What he's I want him to use the good laser. <laughs> I don't want him to use the janky laser that, like, from you know, 2010, because I paid fifty percent less uh -huh, than the uh -huh, lady uh -huh. ahead of me. So yeah, there are certain things I feel good about spending, you know, top dollar Massages. on. Massages. Massages. Mm -hmm. Anything to do with the face. <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't want a cheap, I don't want the bottom dollar dentist or, uh, you know, a surgeon. You know, I, I, I want the, I want the good stuff. Mm -hmm. So. And how, do, and how do we know what the good one is? Well, we don't necessarily at the beginning, but if, and, you know, unless we get a referral, generally we're basing our perception or our thoughts on price price and online reviews, mm -hmm. which yes. I will be reading pages and pages and pages before I take that plunge. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. you should go check out our past episode where we talked about online reviews. Online reviews. It all, Absolutely. It all if you have tons and tons and tons of five-star reviews and you haven't raised your rates in a year, it's time. Yeah. It's time. So, Jen, what uh, hang, if, hang on. Can I change okay. that? If you haven't, re if you haven't reviewed your rates in a year, it's time. Period. It's time. <laughs> yeah. It's time. <laughs> oh, we Jen, can, we're doing musical theatre now. Yeah, uh, oh, okay, I'm sorry, Sam. Back off. Go for it, Joe. <laughs> I don't know. We haven't even been able to do the role playing yet. So I don't know if we're going to be able to do the theater. Okay. All right. All right. Jen, well, how about I be one of your sparing clients? And you just told me, you just came to me and said, hey, there's, we're going to, we're going to take away your rollover. Okay. Oh, you take, did you take away the rollover? Took mitts, them away. Stop yeah. it. And then I took them away. We gave them the notice. Jar. We gave them notice. But oh, yeah, okay. we gave them like, uh, we gave them 60 days notice. Oh, okay, so I had two months. Oh, okay, okay. So, okay, no, so I'm the client. So, okay. so Jen, what do you what do you mean? I'm not going to have rollover minutes anymore. Yeah, we are not doing rollover hours. It hours. was it was too complicated, and I actually don't think we were doing you a service as a client because what we were doing is we were allowing you to delay delegating, and by delaying delegating, you're stunting the growth of your business. You came to us because you were overwhelmed and had too much on your plate. So by us giving you that flexibility, you're able to delay that very important item of, of delegating so you could step into that role of CEO. So when we're not doing right by our clients, we have to make changes. So we decided to stop the rollover hours. Oh, okay. So it's going to be a little bit cheaper then because you don't have to account for me not using minutes, uh, hours. No, the, our hourly rate is the same, but you can certainly adjust your um, your monthly amount with us. But I suggest you don't because you still have those needs that you had when you started with us. And we're just going to work more closely with you to make sure that you task out your sparent effectively and grow your business. Okay. Did, did right. I convince I, I, you? Yeah, I, I think, I think you did. Good. That's great. It sounds like you had this conversation before. No, no, Jen's the, really? no, Jen's the queen. No, she, she <laughs> took the correct role. She's the queen. It's not hard to do because I, I had, I knew exactly why I was doing it. It wasn't all, mm. and it was well, those that, reasons. It was exactly the reasons I told you. It wasn't coming from a place of dishonesty. It wasn't yeah. coming from a place where I, of greed, it was coming from a place of practicality for both the business and the client. It wasn't working yeah. for either of us. And it, you know, it's like, if you're having, if you're, if you, you you look for wins on both sides, but you you know if you also have to analyze like if we're losing on both sides, then we need to we need to change um, you know we need to change the script a little bit. So, and I think that's why we didn't get any pushback from clients. We were you know we communicated effectively, we gave them plenty of notice, and they knew why we were doing it. So it's not like I had to I had, didn't have to spend any time on the phone explaining myself to clients. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. And, you, and you gave all the, the perfect reasoning. So it was yeah. perfect. Awesome. Thanks. There yeah. we go. I'll you're, try. You're Role play well done. done. Okay, check that off the list. Now we can move on to musical theater. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, so good. Um, so I know I know we're like already well past our time at this point, but I, I, I we missed this on last week. Uh, and I don't know which one of you wrote this, but the, the great business – uh, great bits, uh, businesses nicing or niching themselves out of business. Oh, it was me. Niching. And it was um, 
people that nice themselves out of business. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. nice, nice, nice themselves. themselves. Oh, I thought it was niching. I, I was calling it nicing, like like pricing and nicing. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm so nice and I want everybody to be able to afford me and I don't want to exclude anybody and I want everybody to get value. And so I'm practically giving my, my you know, services away for free. And now I can't afford to pay my mortgage. Mm-hmm. I mean, I talk to clients like this all the time. Like, you know, I, I talked to a woman, I don't know, a couple months ago and she wasn't, I disqualified her as a client because she wasn't ready to, you know, to delegate. And what she said multiple times during the call, and she's been in business nine years, has never made a profit. And oh. she's like, I don't, Whoa. never made a profit, which means she doesn't have a business. She has a hobby, a very expensive <sighs> hobby. And she's like, I'm not a business person. I'm just not a business person. I, I give, she was giving her services away, literally. And I just have no, I had no patience because yeah, I was like, your most powerful word is no, you're not using it. And you can keep telling yourself you're not a business person, but that's a lie. It's a false story that you're making come true but it's a story you've been telling yourself for a really long time. You don't have to be a genius to be a business person. You don't. You do not have to be a genius. You don't have to be smarter. You don't have to have an MBA. You just need to know some basic math. <laughs> so, some basic math. But even if you don't know that basic math, you can find templates, budgeting templates, yes. and all sorts of things online. You just have to value your time and be willing to, to work hard until your business gets to a point and then be willing to step it, you know, be that CEO and delegate and grow your business and scale it if that's what your vision is. Can but, I, yeah, I, I totally just want to say one thing there, Jen, is that I see that the biggest problem and that client of your, or not that client, that prospect of yours had it. And this is the problem that most people have putting up their prices is mindset. It mindset. is purely mindset. It was a mindset issue, and but it was one that had been in place for a really long time, right? She had mm. been, um, and so on one hand, I felt I felt badly for her, but I'm not a mindset. You know, I'm not I'm not going to switch your mindset. That's not what you know. We're you know, she didn't mm. call mm -hmm. for that. Spirit, um, spirit mindset service. Spirit, yeah, the spirit mindset. We haven't we haven't put a price on that yet. Yeah. But it was interesting to see it in action to see it in action and, and see, um, and she's not the, this person's not the only one. I see it all the mm -hmm. time, business mm -hmm. owners getting in their way. I mean, literally success is on their doorstep and they are just trampling all over it and putting, you know, cement bags on top of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love to say, tell me more about that. Tell me more about tell that. Tell me more about that. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, my god all right well i hope yeah. i want to you know we've had some some uh people watching and so i'd love to hear about uh pricing struggles that you've had because if you know all business owners have it not only mm -hmm. sometimes do we have struggle with like what to, what to even start pricing something at but then when it's time to to raise those prices it can be really challenging how to how to approach it when to do it so mm -hmm. i'd love we'd mm -hmm. love to hear your pricing stories I'm sure you've got some good ones out there. Yeah. I think one of the hardest things is um, when you're going to put your prices up and you're just sort of talking it through someone that you know quite well and they can't, and they actually go, oh, no, no, I don't think you should do that. I find that harder than just putting them mm. up. So um, sometimes <laughs> our own inner circle can hold <laughs> us back. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And I think, you know, you have to be willing to lose some clients when you raise your rates, you just have to be willing to, you know, accept that. Uh, the video that Joe had shared and that's in our, the link is in our comments. Uh, the host makes a really good point that sometimes we fall into this trap of, we really want to work with somebody like, and I've done this myself. Oh, totally. I've had a, a, a potential client. I'm like, oh, I really have that client. I really love that client in our, you know, stable of clients. I really want them on our roster. I want to work with them so bad. And he said, what happens is that you just, you end up doing yourself a disservice because, because you want to work with them so badly, you start, uh, you know, discounting your services. You, you don't respect your, the business boundaries that you have established for your other clientele. And it just gets real messy, real fast. So you have to be really 
you have to be really firm in in the belief of your you know of your your value and the services and products that you are putting out there and very firm with your pricing and not let mm. you know so you know a, a, a form of stargazing you know of, of worship client worship um you know bend you totally it's, yeah it's tough though it's tough sometimes mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's well, it's easy to fall into that trap because you're following them, right? Like they're not oh, yeah. necessarily following you. Yeah, and you, that's why it's it's important to align yourself with with uh, your own host of you know clients that might not be the biggest you know brand names that people know, but ones that are strong in their niche in their industry that mm-hmm. you know they might not be the sexy one, but they're the one that is going to actually pay what you're worth and actually right. want to work with you and maybe go and out of their way to get you more clients because maybe they're not as big as that other brand that you're like I well i was gonna them. say do a really good job and make that client the sexy one right yeah, exactly. right exactly exactly yeah, yeah. don't, yeah. don't, don't be, be, the, be the leader yeah yeah i think that's absolutely. brilliant brilliant advice absolutely um, I didn't get a bell for that joke. Oh, Excuse I'm so- me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was. I was. I was. Honestly, the- Sam, I thought I think you deserve a lot more bell than you got. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. But- All right, there you go. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sam got the groove. She got yeah. The groove. Right. Uh, so real quick, uh, w- w- uh, who who's getting my lunch money this week uh, is a, com- a company called to- and service called Tube Buddy. Uh, if you're running a uh, YouTube channel, you absolutely it's totally free. It starts as free. Um, so you totally should download the plugin and get access to like all these great features that help you get more search, you know, more found in YouTube world. Um, so any kind of video that you're doing and like we were just talking about like big brands, right? Like here's some of the big brands that they're working with. Uh, so it, you know, it's, it's really awesome. Like I said, it starts as free. It goes as cheap as like four fifty a month if you're just getting started. Um, so if you have less than a thousand subscribers, like bam, you could, you can start right out of the gate four fifty a month, which is, which is nothing, but it's not, but it's a super, super powerful tool. Um, and you'll probably end up paying the $19 a month before you know it, because it's, it's totally worth it. If you're going to take it seriously. It totally is. I love tube buddy. So you yeah. both have used it and you've I've seen used- a difference in your, um, yeah. I love that. It, I love that it tells me like the search terms that I can put in mm-hmm. and they're just there. It's just like, it's so much easier. That, oh, it's just like, there's two hours saved on its own. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so good. So good. It gives you that SEO checklist like Yoast does where it tells you like, oh, you don't have your HD thumbnail yet and you don't have this and you haven't put in the end video or the end, you know, page. like all the all the things that you, when you're just getting started, don't realize you need to be doing mm-hmm. to, to help get found and help oh, like, wow. get people into your circle of watching all your videos uh, and, you know, and binging on them. It definitely is 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 a great tool. So I, I would absolutely. I was a bit excited uh, when I saw you put that in, Joe. I thought, oh, good, good one, good, good, good one. Good. Thank, <laughs> you, thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. I don't really utilize YouTube myself, but I love knowing that this exists because we definitely, you know, work with clients that have YouTube. Your clients will yeah. love this, Joe. Yes, gem. yes, absolutely. I love it too, buddy. I love the name too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely makes makes YouTube a lot easier and more digestible to to like put together really qu- quality content and then uh, get it found by people. So that's who's getting my lunch money this week. Wow, take uh, money. Right. Take well, my money. I thought everybody knew about it, Jen. I I, I was scared. I was. Yeah, hey, I, <laughs> I didn't know about it. All right. Well, this uh, this episode has been a lot of fun. I hope you've all gotten something out of it. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to, to next week's episode. And hopefully we'll know in a few days what that episode will be about. So you definitely want to make sure you're joining us uh, next Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and Tuesday, 7 a.m. Australian Eastern Time. I think I don't need to say Tuesday. Can't I just say 7 a.m. Australian Eastern Time for Monday? Isn't that enough? I no, not. because okay. then that, that would be Monday morning and people would be sitting here for 24 hours waiting for us. Oh, no, that would be that would be that would be terrible. 
I, that would be. I, I don't want anybody doing that. Australians um, do like to chill out, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, send us your questions and suggestions to questions at businessgeekspodcast.com. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please share it with the business geek in your life. We will see you all next Monday slash Tuesday. Take care, everybody, and uh, have a great week. Bye.